Welcome back. Look, I'm in a completely different part of the studio. I have never been here before. It's like they opened a door and I've walked through into a kind of studio Narnia. Um, so we'll see what happens. I will admit I had heard of Veganuary. Veganuary, how do you pronounce that? What do you say? Vegan? I think it's Veganuary. Like Veganuary. Veganuary, you know. It doesn't sound like a real word to me. <laughs> However... It's uh, not. It's not. <laughs> but this month is also apparently January. You see what we did there? Some five million Britons are now, according to research, regular drinkers of gin. Increasingly, it seems beer and wine are being challenged for dominance, not in my house, uh, by a rise in interest in cocktails like martinis, uh, Negronis, is that right? Negroni? Yeah, yeah. Negroni. You see, I'm, 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 I, 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 I don't know where I am with this stuff. And a Long Island iced tea. I have vague memories of Long Island iced tea in another life. The common denominator in all of those and more is gin. Joining us now to refresh our palates with the spirit of the moment is Rory O'Sullivan, UK brand manager for Martin Miller's Gin. Hello, Rory. Nice to be here. I was Thank, Thank you for coming me. in. Uh, I, I have to tell you now that uh, Polly and Tom tell me they are on dry January. I've heard. Do you think maybe we'll be able to twist it around and maybe uh, do like a dry uh, January? Uh, uh, I, I think maybe some sniffing. Uh, can, you, can you sniff, can <laughs> yeah, you sniff can spirits? Sniff and, yeah, maybe a little sniff. During dry, yeah. dry yeah. Yeah. You could, act, you, could act, you could fall yeah. into the glass. In the interest of television research, I can... Uh, you I can mean, it's that. like a, a big moral... Philo- it's like, the, I don't know, the big idea. So one of those yeah. big moral philosophy questions. Who will crack and how yeah. far will they crack? You could well, trip and fall easily. into the glass. 70% <laughs> of your taste is for your smell anyway. So yeah. you're going to get 70% Great. of the drink. It's fine. It's all good. Now, I, I used the word uh, January, which yes. I heard for the first time earlier today. Yeah. I'll be quite honest with you. Is it, is it really a thing? Are yeah, people talking so, about January? It's a starting trend. It's been around for a few years, um, but it's become more and more popular. And it's really just to do with the rise of craft gins. So loads and loads of people see in January as an opportunity um, not to really go out and get really drunk. That's not the idea. But the whole idea of January is that you're trying something different. So you might try a new gin every day, something that you might not really expect that you're going to like. And you're building that uh, sort of like respect for how the spirit's made. Because all gins are made in a different way, and that's the fascinating thing. I, I certainly grew up thinking that gin was gin. Yeah. What is, what is uh, taught me through this idea of, you know, craft gin. Yeah. And, and, but I am aware that gin has changed its reputation. Mm. There's, uh, there's a, a neighbouring friend of mine, actually, in Stirling, uh, has, uh, amongst other things, has a company producing tin, Kinrara gin, I know, because mm. we have a, you know, a beautiful bottle of it in the house. Where has that interest come from? So, I think in, in Scotland, another sort of key thing you've got to look at is that a lot of people are making whiskey distilleries. And obviously, when you're aging a whiskey, you can't sell that whiskey for like seven years, minimum, right? So, what do you do in the meantime? So, you're seeing loads and loads of new Scottish gins come out. And that's sort of like tying in with the whiskey industry as well. Obviously, there's people making gin just sort of standalone. But a lot of that, the rise in sort of Scottish gin has come from that. Um, it's also with grants from the government. So, the Scottish government have been really supportive of setting up new, new, new distilleries to see it, see it as a craft. Um, but in terms of like craft gin, so Martin Miller's essentially led the way um, since 1999. It was the world's first ever super premium gin. So before that point, the idea of having a gin that cost over £20 like, didn't exist at all. No one really cared. It was genuinely seen as like a poor spirit. Um, mm. So Martin Miller really wanted to sort of flip it on its head and sort of like revolutionise the gin industry and make the world's first super premium. So Let's... split distillations, Icelandic spring water... Um, all these things going into Icelandic it. spring water. Yeah. Let's let's bring some gin down the line. Yeah. Here. Let's just uh, shall, shall we make a little drink? See, smell, and perhaps taste. <laughs> some of us. <laughs> what's actually going on? So here. this is our original blends. So that's the one that came out in 1999. Obviously, okay. we've like launched loads of other sort of different products since that. Um, but this is the baby. So this is the iconic one. Um, okay. But the one way it's made, what's quite really interesting about it is—is is it flavoured with juniper? I mean, is it? Yeah. Is it Classic gin. Yeah, so you have to have juniper in gin. Like that's, that's just the one really rule. Um, so this is a steel gin, but it's London dry style. So 10 botanicals, very sort of traditional. Um, but what Martin Miller wanted to do is he looked at really how things were distilled. So what, what sort of reactions happen? Because everything evaporates at different points. That's, that's the science behind it. Um, so he realised that the citrus obviously would go first. So that's the most volatile. So he distilled all that separately. And then he used, put the juniper, the roots and the spices in another one. So there's two different things. So we're kind of blending it like you blend a scotch. And then the water you use is obviously really, really, really important. This whole idea of like if what, 60% of that bottle is, 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 is water, it's, water has taste, so it can have character. So the water we use is officially one of the purest waters in the world. It's 10 times purer than like French port waters like Evian and all that sort of thing. Um, so we're 20 parts per million. And the average French water is 200 parts. But 
because of that, the really cool thing about it is that because we leave, leave these minerals in, mm. it actually gives flavour and it actually makes a really sort of well-rounded, sort of like smooth mm. mouthfeel on the palate. Anyway, we'll make some drinks. Okay. I'm going to make a bee's knees, if you don't mind. I don't know if you've heard of a bee's knees. Okay. So, Bee's Knees is probably one of my favourite cocktails in the world to make. I have never heard of such a thing. Oh, it's so simple. So it's gin, lemon and honey. That's it. But the beauty of it is obviously because the drink's so simple, when you're... So, shall, shall I make you one or shall we just make one? I'm going to sniff one. You're going to sniff one. Mm. Okay, no worries. Make a couple, make a couple of I'll them. I'll make a couple of them. Okay. So, obviously for one, it's 50. So then we've got two. We'll do 100. Okay. So nice and simple. You can make the drink at home. Really, really easy. Um, but the real, one big thing you should sort of look at is obviously have a good quality gin, but have a good quality honey as well. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use Bermondsey Street bees. That must change the, the texture and consistency. I mean, exactly. honey is not, well, it's, be, it, it's a liquid, but it's a fairly thick liquid. Especially this one. So okay. this one's a, a creamed Ling Lever honey. Um, Ling Haver honey, sorry. Um, okay. But yeah, really, really thick. Honey's got a lot of flavour. So honey is like quite cool as an ingredient because very, very similar to gin in the way that Gins, are, we're, when we're distilling things, we're going around, we're foraging for our botanicals. So, mm. what, are, what botanicals? What, define that for me. So, botanicals essentially are different sort of flavors. Botanical can be anything, but it's a, it's a, normally comes from a flower or, or sort of peels or roots, that sort of thing. Okay. And it's actually used to flavor gin. So, it's flavorings? Yeah, pretty much. So, we basically distill these, but it can be anything. It can be sort of roots, spices, anything. Uh, it's put into the mixture. Um, Would it have occurred to you to put honey? Yeah. In Gin. I mean, honey and whiskey, obviously, for the purposes of a hot toddy. Absolutely. Honey and yeah. gin. Honey and gin is delicious, but the one important thing to do, especially when using such a thick honey as well, is make sure you stir all the ingredients together. Because if you just shake mm. it, it's just going to have a big lump of honey. So when you're making them at home, that's what I'd advise you to do, because otherwise it's just going to be really, really sour. Mm. Okay. I'll put this over here. I don't want to ruin the beautiful studio. Um, so here we've got some lemon juice. Um, we're going to put the same amount as the, as the honey. So the honey would be 25 ml. There's liquids, so you choose a spoon. We're going to do 25 ml for each, so we put 50 for the two. Okay. Then that's it. Then we're going to ice it up. And you talked about the explosion in uh, craft gin brands. Why is it when I go into a supermarket now and I look at the, the gin aisle almost, you'll yeah. see, and there's such a cornucopia of different brands, but also different colours? Because my perception of gin, I'm not a gin drinker, but is that it's plain, it's plain in colour and yeah. you can mix it. So, Why are you seeing all these different coloured So, are, you know, Do they taste fair, differently? Or? It does taste completely different. So a lot of those will just be colourings. So people yeah. just want, want to do just it to make it look nice. Turquoise, yeah. Yeah, but then you do get some other gin companies. So there's a few where you sort of like macerate sort of fresh berries and strawberries. Or like, right. There's this really traditional thing called slow gin where you get slow berries mm -hmm. and you put it inside. So things like that do exist. The pink gins do tend to be, on average, just like there for the colour. Um, but yeah, we don't mm. necessarily make a pink gin for Martin Miller's. We, but we've got some seasonal ones, but not a flavour. Right. Um, but yeah, the, the, the good thing is, is that because it's been going on for so long, and the demand, it means that there's a gin for every occasion. So mm. it's like, the one thing that's really great to be working with gin is you, get, you taste someone and it's like, oh, I don't like gin. It's like, mm. you've had one gin. Gins can taste completely different. Gins can be really mm. fruity, they can be really spice-forward, they can be sort of like really sharp and peppery, they can be citrusy. Mm. So the idea of saying you don't like gin doesn't really make any sense because it's, like it's like a flavoured vodka, essentially. You know? And it makes a big difference what you put in it as well because, you know, my mum would always have a gin with a slice of lemon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, there are some gins where they say, oh, put in a peel of cucumber or some with yeah. a strawberry. <laughs> and it does really like, change the Completely. character of the whole drink. Yeah. And, and has, you know, our, our cocktails back, because I'm thinking in this time of lockdown where obviously huh. people have been entertaining at home. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> With the, with the consent of the authorities or not, uh, has, it, has it inspired illicit illicit cocktail experimentation? It has. Um, let's, bring, let's bring this on. Shall, let's show me, yeah. shall I shake this? Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll answer your question first. Um, so lockdown has been like an, an amazing thing because people have started to respect things more. So it could really come from sort of this idea of recreating a restaurant experience. So people when in lockdown hated let's, it. Let's have some. Right? Yep. People in lockdown hated being, not being able to go to their favourite bar, not seeing their favourite bartender, having their favourite drink. So people sort of took it upon themselves, like, let's get creative, let's make things at home. OK. Um, which really, really, really helped us. Um, but also, it meant, like, a greater appreciation because people now understand what these needs it. They understand what goes into Martin Miller's gin. So, okay. 
it helps. Right, here we go. Here we go, everybody. So, I January or not, <laughs> slide it along the bar. Dry January, January. <laughs> I've, 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 made, I've made two, so we'll <laughs> split them between. Yep. Them, so you can smell. We'll have to. Well, let's just. Let's just. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. There we go. I'll do the small ones first. You're not going to have them. Yep. Yep. The small ones. Okay. There we go. There you go, a little smell. See, when I think of gin, Neil, I just can't get out of my mind the Hogarth painting. Oh, Gin Lane. Gin Lane. Yeah. Gin Lane, Mother's yes. Ruin. It's just... Yes, it hasn't always had a happy reputation, has it? No, it hasn't. Um, well, good health. Good health. Happy New Year. Health, yeah, happy New Year. Yep. Right, what do we... Oh, cheers, guys. Cheers. cheers. What were you thinking? It's very distinctive on the palate. It smells amazing. This is like the hardest thing I've ever done. Well, that's, um, mm. oh, that's one of those dangerous yeah. things, isn't it? That doesn't actually taste... Alcoholic to that, me. Yeah, that's and, um, that's a worry. Could... <laughs> and if you think in, in, in that glass right now, this, this is the beauty of a cocktail. To be fair, is that you get something that essentially just mm. tastes like juice. The point of a well balanced drink is that it's not meant to be like forward on anything. It shouldn't be aggressive in your face. Mm. That glass right there is half of that glass is alcohol. Mm. We just put a little bit of honey and a little bit of lemon, but it's complemented in such a way that it's making it really rounded off, and it's, it's a nice experience. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a yeah. delicious. Offering. I'm pleased you're enjoying it. Yeah, it does really taste, though, more like the kind of drink you would you drink in the morning with your cornflakes as a healthy... <laughs> that's an probably not a good sign, isn't it? That's yeah. an yeah. insight yeah. into... That's how it like, starts. I'm going to stay around at your house. Yeah. No, but honestly. Um, in terms of, like, gin and honey, we actually do, as a brand, we do a lot of things for Well-B Day. Um, so the only if you can do UN Well-B Day, it's May the 20th. I, my, my reaction to that is that that's very comforting. Mm. Mm. Uh, and I would, not, I, would have, I would have thought of, you know, whiskey is, and brandies as a yeah. mm. That is a very comforting yeah. flavour. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Many thanks. For, hey, I, cheers pleasure. once again. Cheers. And, and thank yeah. you, Polly. Gin Time thank Saturdays. You.